Hello YouTube, this is Sam from Tiger Schooling and uh, in this session of the video, we're actually going to talk about the lung volumes and capacities. Uh, this question was asked by Mr. Raja Aves and uh, we'll try to make it easy as possible. So in lung volume and capacities, we'll be talking about approximately nine things, or totally nine things that is, I will be talking about the tidal volume, inspiratory reserved volume, expiratory reserved volume, and residual volume. These four things are volumes and we'll talk about the capacities, that is your inspiratory capacities, functional residual capacity, vital capacity, total lung capacity, forced expiratory first second. So uh, after this lecture, I make sure that you understand everything because after listening to this lecture, you will be ha having a good idea about all those things. So uh, I'll be using this chart in order to elaborate what I want to explain. So we'll start with the tidal volume. Uh, this tidal volume is uh, around here, right? This is your tidal volume. So your tidal volume is around 500 milliliter. So we are talking about the gases, it's the normal gas, or you can say the tidal volume is actually, it is the amount of air that can, that is inspired or expired in each normal breath. While now you are, you are listening to this lecture and you are breathing. And during this breath, this amount of volume, this amount of air volume is being exchanged or the air that you are expiring and inhaling at the same time is 500. So this amount of air that is inspired or expired in each normal breath, not seconds, not minutes, normal breath is called the tidal volume. The second thing is the inspiratory reserve volume. So while talking about the inspiratory reserve volume, remember it is the extra volume of air that can be inspired with maximum effort and beyond the tidal volume. What I want to say is that you are breathing normally, right? You have 500 normal breath. This is your normal 500, that's it, normal. But if you, and we're now we're talking about the inspiratory reserve volume. So the inspiratory reserve volume, its value is around, let me write it down. Its value is 3000 ml. Its value is 3000 ml. What does that mean? It is the extra volume. For example, I'm breathing normally. And if I take a deep breath, and that deep breath, that extra air, not the tidal volume. We are not including tidal volume in the inspiratory reserve volume. It's the extra air. It's the inspiratory extra air that we are inhaling, which is 3000 ml is your inspiratory reserved volume. So this is your IRV, which is above the 500 is not included. It's separate. It's except the tidal volume, the extra air you are taking in with the maximum effort. The third thing is expiratory reserve volume, which is around 1100 ml. So what does that mean, extra, uh, the expiratory reserve volume? It is the extra volume of air that can be expired with maximum effort over and beyond the tidal volume. The same thing, you're at the tidal volume, and now you're going down, you're expiring. Using your full energy, like you are breathing normally, and suddenly you stop breathing and expire all the air that is inside you. Like for example, that extra volume of air that you expired is around 1100 ml and that is called, that's, we call that thing as expiratory reserved volume. The last volume which we are going to talk about in the volume section is your, this guy called residual volume. So residual volume is around 1200 ml so it is the maximum volume of air that remains in the lungs after forceful and maximum expiration so that lungs are never completely collapsed so this this volume whatever you 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 breathe every inch every milliliter of air out of your lungs but this volume is going nowhere it is going to be there forever so this volume that is always there and never letting your lungs to collapse is actually the residual volume and its value is must to remember that is the 1200 milliliter now we're talking about the capacities 
Uh, we'll be talking about the inspiratory capacity. We'll be talking about the functional residual and all these capacities. First, we'll be talking about the inspiratory capacity. So, cap inspiratory capacity means it is the maximum. It is the maximum volume of air that can be inspired with force after normal expiration. What does that mean? You have you are breathing normally and you expire. For example, let me draw it here. For example, this is your inspiratory capacity. For example, you are breathing and suddenly you take a deep breath after a normal expiration. You took all your air out. Now you breathe. First, you fill up the tidal volume because you have expired everything. First, you take a, take a small breath that is if you have filled up the extra volume what is that that is a tidal volume and then you take another deep another deep breath which means you're inspiring more which includes your what we call the uh, irv which is your inspiratory reserve volume so your this capacity which is inspiratory capacity is equal to your tidal volume because you have because when uh, while defining the uh, inspiratory capacity we have the tidal volume plus uh, inspiratory reserved volume so in, uh, inspiratory capacity is the volume that we inhale from where from the normal expiratory phase for example if i'm going to define again i'll be saying it is the maximum volume of air that can be inspired with force after a normal expiration and we'll be using uh, tv which is uh, stands for kind of a Tidal volume 500 and plus IRV, which is was your 3000, and you add up both, you get 3500. Its value is 3500 ml. Very easy to remember. Now let's talk about the functional residual capacity. The functional residual capacity is uh, the volume of air remaining in the lungs after a normal expiration. You're taking a breath and uh, after normal inspiration, after normal expiration, for example, which means we don't include the tidal volume because we have expired our air. So tidal volume is out. So what is remaining? So in functional cap residual capacity, we have the, uh, this air is always there, which is called the residual volume. So we'll be including the residual volume like uh, for example let me add the residual volume plus which air is there get it it's the e r v your expiratory reserve volume we're not taking an a deep expiration no we're not forcefully taking air out we're normally taking a deep uh, normally taking a breath and we are expiring it after uh, expiration which means we have lost the tidal volume the remaining uh, volume the remaining volume in the uh, in the lungs would be this which is called functional residual volume which includes your residual volume which is always there going nowhere and your expiratory reserve volume is this one that is that can be expired with a forceful expiration but we are not uh, forcefully expiring we are normally expiring so we don't include the tidal volume in it so its value would be around like we add up the res residual volume which is 1200 ml and expiratory reserve volume which is 1100 ml so it adds up to be 2300 ml this is your functional residual volume. Now we're we'll talking about the vital capacity. You must understand these both things. They are totally different. Vital capacity and total lung capacity, they are both different. In vital capacity, we would be saying it is the maximum volume of air that a person can expire with a force following a maximum forceful inspiration. What does that mean? That taking, you are taking a deep breath and after taking a deep breath, you are, you are pushing your limits to take all the air out of your body, out of your lung. And that air which, are taking, which you are taking out of your lungs after a forceful inspiration is called the vital capacity. It means the total capacity of your lungs to, uh, to exchange the air, put it that way. It's not the total lung capacity, which is totally different. I'll be talking about it in just a bit. But in vital capacity, what would you be including if I write down VC? 
we would be having the inspiratory reserved volume because we have taken a deep breath to bring that air. So we also have to throw this air out. So we have the inspiratory reserved volume. We would be have the we would be having expiratory reserve volume because we have to take this out and the small and this and this the one thing more it's the tidal volume which is always there so these three things well you're taking a deep breath you've got irv you're taking it forcefully out you've got erv and you have a normal tidal volume always present so th this all includes to end up at a level we called 4600 ml right so this is your vital capacity of your lungs. And it, it, is, it also represents maximum volume exchange, which is possible in your lungs. And this uh, volume capacity is actually decreased in your dis lung diseases like COPD, your pulmonary congestion, uh, like maybe it also it uh, decreases in your, when you are lying down, when you're you know, lying down on a bed. And now let's move towards the total lung capacity. This is TLC, which value is 5,800 ml. So the total lung capacity, it is the maximum volume of air that can be filled in the lungs with maximum inspiratory effort. You're taking a deep breath. You got all air in your body. And the total air you got when we earlier measured that to the total air which you inspired uh, which could be taken out including this tidal volume would would be 4500 which is we would be saying the uh, vital capacity is there in total lung capacity and one thing more is there which we have not entered is your residual volume this guy is always present this residual volume is always there, but it's not exchangeable. Remember, residual volume is not exchangeable. The exchangeable is vital capacity that is not exchangeable and totally present in your lungs. After taking a deep breath, you got all the air, like the total capacity of your lung is your total lung capacity, which ends up to be 5,800 ml because we, we add up this 4,600 plus the residual volume, which is 1,200, and we end up to the 5,800 ml of your total lung capacity. Now we'll talk about the force expiratory volume, which is in first second. Uh, before talking that, I'll, I'll let me tell you something. We can measure all of this using a spirometry. We can measure tidal volume inspiratory and all this using a what a spirometry. But we cannot measure the expi force expiratory volume using or the force respiratory capacity using the uh, what we call what I said, the uh, spirometry. We, we for this, for measuring this, we'll be using a helium dilution method. For measuring this, we'll be using a helium dilution method. But other things are, can be measured through the uh, spirometry. Then. So this is it regarding the lung capacities and volumes. And uh, for any other lecture, for anything to you want to know about, please make sure to visit our website. That is www.tigeschooling.com and leave a comment and let us know how can we help you with your lectures and keep visiting Tigeschooling.